I'm going to walk through how to have a connection between MATLAB and an Arduino to be able to read values and also be able to control things on the Arduino. We're going to use the Arduino support package with MATLAB or Octave. I'll run through an example first with MATLAB and then do the same one in Octave, very similar. If you didn't get the instructions on how to run MATLAB through a Jupyter Notebook, you can do that in the introduction Python, uh, IPython notebook. This is a notebook right here that will show you how to get it set up with MATLAB or Arduino Octave uh, to be able to have Arduino support and a couple videos there as well. You can get the source code for this uh, from this GitHub repository and um, I'll just go ahead and jump right in to this exercise. Okay, the Arduino is a microcontroller that allows us to be able to read values. It has an analog to digital converter, and then also allows a serial connection, a USB connection, to allow us to control things on the Arduino as well. There's some additional instructions here. Uh, the main thing that you need to do is just get the Arduino set up with the right firmware. I'm going to go through this Octave one later, but um, if you're in MATLAB, you need to come back to the MATLAB prompt and after you've installed the Arduino support you just need to put the firmware onto the Arduino and uh, you can do that with Arduino setup oh I need to get rid of the space there okay let me just try that again without the space and it's going to open up a dialog box that you can go through and select USB, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. I'm connected through USB. And I'll just click Next. I'll choose the board. The temperature control app that I'm working with right now is a Leonardo. So I'm just going to scroll down to Leonardo and choose Port. I'm on COM10. All right, and then next I can program the board. It's going to upload the drivers to the board, and it'll take just a little bit of time to do that, but you only need to do this once for any particular Arduino. And then once those drivers are on there, unless you've switched to a different platform like Python or put other firmware on there, you don't need to do this again. Okay, so this is just a one-time thing. MATLAB takes a couple minutes generally to do this. I'm just going to pause it and then come back. Um, oh, it just finished. I didn't need to pause it. All right, I can go next, and we can test the connection. And then it's going to uh, say if it's successful, it says test connection successful. All right, and with some instructions about how to use it. I'll cover those in just a little bit. All right, and there's some examples as well. We're going to go through some examples together. Okay, so here, um, if you are in uh, if you are in Octave, you need to do the package load Arduino, but that's only for Octave. Okay, I'm going to put a try catch end there, so I can just run this, and it's going to work also in MATLAB um, or Octave. All right, I'm going to change this back to the different kernel here and change it over to MATLAB. All right, so now this is going to run with MATLAB instead. And you're going to see that the command is not needed for MATLAB or if Octave you need to install our Domino support package. All right, we're going to first of all just go ahead and connect um, with this this a lab equals arduino and that's going to create a connection for matlab if it's successful you're going to see the things down below and you can see that it's successful here's the port and the available pins that are there all right and if you're in octave i'll show you that later here is the temperature control lab and <clears throat> we have different sensors actuators and controllers uh, we have this TMP36 transistor uh, or thermistor uh, temperature sensor. It is a transistor as well. And then you have some BJTs, transistors that are the heaters. And then you also have an LED. And those are the pins that they're connected to for their signals. 
All right, so we have a couple analog and digital pins that we need to connect to. So let's go ahead and just, first of all, read voltage from A0. All right, A0 is going to be the very first one. If I run this, it's going to read a voltage of 0.757. Now I need to convert that into a temperature. And I'll do that with this formula. It's 100 times the voltage minus 0.5. And so if I just put in that formula and run this, it's going to give me the current temperature of the device, 25.7. And it's accurate within plus or minus 1 degree Celsius. If I run this again, I'm going to get another voltage. And it might be slightly different. Um, depending on if I continue running it, I might see the temperature change a little bit. Okay, but overall, it's fairly precise. Um, you know, but plus or minus one degree on the accuracy. All right, now what I want you to do here is if it's cool, right now it's 25.7 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna reach over and put my hand onto the temperature sensor. So if you have a device, uh, I'll just show you over here. Uh, it's gonna be the one right on the right. You're gonna see a T1 and it's this little, um, you can't really see it right here, but it's, a little uh, thermistor right there. You can just put your hand on it. And I'm doing that right now. I did it for about 20 seconds. And then if I read the voltage again, you're going to see that it went up just a little bit. And if I run this again, it was 25.7. Now it's 27.7. All right, so we successfully read the temperature from the Arduino device. All right, now there's... Um, Let's go ahead and just calculate this change. Okay, so I'm going to read it again. I'll put my finger back on it and then run this code. And let's just see uh, what the change in temperature is. Okay, so it went up um, by about half a degree Celsius. Now the next thing we want to do is not just read values, from the Arduino, we also want to write values as well. And one of the ways to control transistors or other things on an Arduino is through pulse width modulation. Now the way that works is when you send a signal of, let's say I want my heater, okay, here's my transistor heater, and I'm gonna send a signal to it that I want it on, let's say 50%. What the Arduino does is it doesn't really have a halfway, but it can cycle that on and off. And it does that very fast. This turns on and off about 490 hertz or cycles per second. So if you want it on 50%, it's going to be on half of the time. But let's say you wanted it on, um, let's say 10% of the time instead. All right, so 10%, it would be on for one cycle and then be off for nine cycles and then on for one cycle and then off for nine. This happens very fast, okay? So you almost don't even notice the difference. If you had something like a light switch that you were turning on and off that fast, you'd wear out that switch, but transistors can handle that. So let's use the right pulse width modulation duty cycle. Okay, now this one, we're going to control the LED on the device. And that's through the digital pin 9. All right, and then I'm going to pause and then change it to 30%, and then to 10%, and then 2%. Okay, so when I run this, it's going to just do one second each, and you can see the LED turn on at different levels. Now for this next test, we're gonna plug in the power cable for the heaters, okay? So this is something we didn't need before, but you, you wanna use the wall um, five volt jack, uh, connect that to the, uh, make sure you do it to the top power jack, uh, the barrel jack, and that's gonna give power to the heaters. All right, we're gonna do the same thing, but now through, um, digital pin three or five. So this isn't correct, that should be five right here. 
All right, and let's go ahead and just turn on heater one to 60%. All right, and then we'll print out the temperature and we'll also read the voltage. So I just put that on one line uh, to be able to print out the voltage. So read it and then converted it to degrees Celsius. Now I'm gonna wait 20 seconds and then I'm gonna read the temperature again and then I'll turn off the heater. Okay, so this is gonna take 20 seconds to run. The heater is going to be on. Uh, it's not going to have that much of a, a temperature change, um, but uh, we'll see hopefully just a little bit of increase in temperature after uh, the 20 seconds. It typically takes about a minute for it to really start getting hot. Okay, so you can see it went up just a little bit. There's just a little bit of a delay when you run that. I'll turn it on for another 20 seconds. You'll hopefully be able to see um, a little bit bigger temperature rise. So what it's doing is 60% of the time it's turning that on and, uh, and then turning it off. It does that at uh, 490 cycles per second. So very fast. You can see the, you know, it's getting a little bit hotter there. All right. And then the very last thing that we want to do is disconnect. Now I haven't found a good way to do that with the Arduino and MATLAB or Octave. Uh, so I just clear that variable and it closes the serial connection and turns off the device. Okay, so just clear your variable of how you named uh, the Arduino. In that case, it was a lab is how we connected originally. So we just cleared that variable in the end. So let me come back up here uh, to where we originally connected. So it was right there. We named our Arduino, Arduino lab. All right, uh, let me come back down and let's go ahead and complete this. I'll show you this in uh, Octave as well. Okay, so now we want to do a test. I, I have this temperature tclab.m file. So it really simplifies how we write to the pins. And there's the source if you want to take a look at it. But let's just download it automatically. So for MATLAB, we just need to use web save. I'm going to go out and get that file at the URL. And uh, otherwise, it's going to be for Octave. Octave doesn't have a web save yet, so instead I'll use URL write, which is virtually the same thing. You just swap the URL and the file. Okay, so when I run this, it'll try to do it for MATLAB first, and it got the file. All right, so now I'm going to just go ahead and connect, okay, with the TC Lab. In this case, I'll just name it Lab. All right, looks like I'm still connected. Hmm. Okay, so that, this happens when I haven't cleared, uh, cleared a lab. I think that's it. Let me just see if I can clear lab as well. All right, oh, you know what? It's right here. Okay, there it is. I just, the comment character was hash sign. Okay, so I'm going to run this, and it's going to connect. I didn't need the clear. All right, let me try that again. Now it says, okay, it can't connect because it's already connected. So that case where I do need to do the clear lab, and then it will connect again. So I need to disconnect it before I connect it. All right, now LED. Let's do use the LED function. I'm going to turn that on to 10%. Now the heaters. I can do that with a Q1, set that to 80%. So this just really simplifies how we connect. You can look at the source code and just how that's done, but I'm basically just taking the pulse width modulation function and just making a function in my class. All right, and then temperatures, there's lab T1 and T2, and it's just gonna print those out. All right, and then if you want to shut off the heaters and turn off um, the LED, you can do that with lab off. Just print out a message that TC lab heaters and LED are off. And you can also close the connection. And let me again put that as a percent. Okay, so there it is. It cleared the lab, so it closed the serial connection to the lab. All right, so let's do an activity now. Uh, we want to connect the blue USB cable plug in the white power cable, just like we have it right now. We're going to modify the name of the object from lab to 
ink. Okay, this is going to be our incubator for eggs that we're going to be hatching for our final project. All right, we want to have some comments in there on the purpose of each line. And we'll change the LED brightness to the same level as a temperature to visually display uh, T1. So that's the challenge we want to have. Read the temperature value, but then change the LED to that temperature value. And again, there are the function helps that we just went through. And I'll just start with a, a skeleton program here with some of these. All right, and we're just going to have a very simple program right here. So what I want to do first is um, go ahead and just change the lab. I can change the name of the object. So for example, this is going to be the incubator. All right, and then I just need to change it. Wherever I rename that, I just need to change all the calls to that. All right, and there we go. I'll go ahead and run this just to make sure it works. It's going to pause for 10 seconds. It's going to turn on the heater one to 100%, the LED to 100%. It'll read the temperature, wait 10 seconds, and then read the temperature again. Okay, so there is our first one. Now we want to add some comments. All right, this is going to disconnect uh, if connected. All right, this is going to create a new connection to the TC Lab Arduino. All right, this is just a comment. Okay, comment, and then turn on heater to 100%. Turn on LED to 100%. All right, this is print T1. And same thing here, print T1, and this is pause 10 seconds. And uh, this, uh, so turn off, and then this is uh, disconnect. All right, so now what we want to do is just set the value of the LED equal to the heater one temperature. So I'm going to have my incubator Q1. And that's going to be, oh, not Q1, this is going to be LED. I'm going to set it to incubator T1. All right, and then after the 10 seconds, I'll just do that again. All right, so this is one way to do that. Just set the LED equal to the value of the temperature. It gives some kind of visual indication as you're going about what is the temperature um, just by looking at the LED. And there you can see uh, the two temperatures. 10 seconds really isn't a lot of time to heat it up. All right, so there it is in, in uh, MATLAB. Let's just go through the same one in Octave as well. So if you have the files, you can just navigate over to the Octave folder and open up just the same one, but it's a Jupyter notebook for Octave. And you can see, I'll just switch the kernel. All right, let's see. I'm going to change the kernel to octave. If you have, you can always switch it. Okay. All right, and I could have done the same one. Actually, let me just do the same one that we were working on. That might be easier. All right, there we go. We change it to octave. Let's just go ahead and run through the same thing. It's going to be very quick. I'm not going to retype out all of these things. Uh, but what we want to do is just uh, load the support package. OK, and it's already installed. And then when I try to run this, there's going to be an error because it has the MATLAB firmware on it. I need to switch to the Octave firmware. OK, so what I need to do is just start up Octave. All right, and this is going to be package load Arduino. And then I can do a setup. Let's see, it's Arduino setup, no spaces there. And you have to have the Arduino IDE installed. And then just select the port. And it's an Arduino Leonardo. 
Sometimes it'll recognize those for you automatically, and then you just click Upload. So it's going to pop up in uh, these firmware files, has to compile them, and then install them on your Arduino, much the way that MATLAB did. But MATLAB just seems to be more convenient on that. It'll have this GUI interface. They'll do it for you. You want to watch that it's done uploading here. There are no errors. OK, so that's it. You only need to do it once for, for this. But if you switch back to MATLAB, you got to do it again. OK, so if it's successful, we should see a different message here. It looks like it was successful. And you can see the different pins that it connected to. Let's go down here and read the same functions. OK, um, and I'm going to read the same voltage. And there you can see the temperature. All right, here's the temperature difference. OK, temperature is going down right now. It was hot. And I'm going to do the pulse width modulation. You can see Octave is a little bit nicer. You can see some results as it goes. MATLAB just does everything and then prints it out. All right, and let's go on to this next one. We're going to, uh, in this case, we're going to turn on the heater 1 to 60% with right pulse width modulation duty cycle. It's the same function between MATLAB and Octave. All right, and it'll wait 20 seconds. So it's currently in the process of waiting right now, 20 seconds. And then uh, there's the new temperature. All right, I can close the connection as well. Let me come down here. I'm going to get um, that file in the directory. So retrieve that file with URL right. And now I can run through. Uh, this one I can connect with that same tclab.m function and turn on the LED to 10%, turn on the heater to 80%. There are a couple temperatures. All right, and then I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to disconnect and let's do the activity again. All right, so the code is already done but I'm just going to run it with Octave. All right, so very similar between the two. You can see it's fairly easy. They've made it very easy for you to connect to an Arduino, be able to get uh, data, and also be able to control things with pulse width modulation. There are also other interfaces, uh, the ITC, that you can use Wi-Fi, you can use Bluetooth, um, and, and that goes for MATLAB as well as Octave. And, uh, you know, and the other thing is there are many different Arduino devices. So they also make it very nice uh, to help you connect to all of these different Arduino devices if you're not just doing the Arduino Leonardo. So if you just come to the, you know, the support packages, so for example, MATLAB support package, and you can see all of the different devices with the version of MATLAB that supports that. So some of the newer ones um, or the less supported ones are just going to be newer versions. And some of them aren't supported either. All right, so you just have to check on that. Make sure you have the sufficiently new version of MATLAB. And then um, Octave as well has instructions, more instructions if you get stuck. All right, well, I hope you've um, enjoyed this. Feel free to leave a comment down below. You know, sometimes there's software updates. Uh, there are things that update as well about the packages. So if you see something like that and you've been able to find a solution, go ahead and leave a comment below.